Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the link in the comment section below. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. This video also has tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. Headed out to tinker a little bit on a Sunday. Hey, last night, right before I went in, uh, well, I went in because I made this mistake. I was flashing the ECU with a fresh tune from Vass on Panther and my computer said it had 30% but evidently it didn't because within a minute that thing failed and crashed right in the middle of flashing that tune which I believe corrupted ECU so I'm going to have to get this ECU replaced as far as I know so right now it's Sunday I don't normally tinker on the Sunday but I got three things I want to do maybe four one give this ECU one more try to flash the data cable is not connecting because that flash didn't complete and it deleted the previous file so it couldn't replace either one. So my data cable is not connecting and probably my uh, uh, OBD2 tools won't either. Number two, I got my um, heater core for Red Baron. I can replace that. And number three, I want to hook up and test and review a Bluetooth OBD2 dongle and download the 850 uh, app and see if it'll read the mileage off of the cluster over there in Red Baron. So let's give this a shot here real quick on Panther, see if this ECU can come back to life. Start it off, turn the ignition on. I have the, uh, trying to connect my OBD2. Scan gauge, it's taking a while, it's not connecting. Let me give it another minute or so, then I'll just bail on this. If that doesn't connect, the computer's not going to connect either. That's a no-go, let's move on to something more productive. We're going to swap out the heater core. I'm going to clamp the lines with my needle nose vice grips under the hood. Then I'm going to swap this heater core real quick. The old floor mat actually stuck to the floor. Feels a little damp, smells bad. Let's get this pulled and see how it looks under there. Yeah, that looks a little wet. Already forgot I had a power amp back here to move. And man, that thing is old. Appears to be leaking. It is soaking wet under there. Let me put the light on. I don't know if that's original or not, but thing has no business in there. So let's get this amp out of the way. Get the other side out of the way. And the last thing I'm going to do is clamp the hoses right before I pull that screw out of there. So I'm going to have everything out of the way before I clamp the hoses. Don't like to leave them on long. Look, brake pedal ain't even on right. How in the heck that happened? Let me get that put on there for that trip me up drive. I forgot I have a thermostat to put in this car. So I'm going to go ahead and drain some of the coolant out of the engine and not even clamp these lines. The coolant draining. Got the new battery clip installed. I'm going to go ahead and pop this thermostat out real quick. And then I'm going to pull that heater core out, swap it over. Thermostat housing is there. Under it is a ETC sensor that goes bad and causes problems for hot and cold starts. 
either or sometimes gives an error code but these are hard to get out a lot of people strip them so let me show you how to avoid that I don't know why but people over tighten these things I guess in fear that they're going to leak however if you see the thermostat it has a rubber gasket on it that rubber gasket with very little pressure will keep that from leaking so we got a new thermostat new rubber gasket also you should get the proper one either from Volvo or from one of the Volvo part suppliers these things are this high uh, ones that I found at local auto parts store are a quarter inch or a half inch longer they don't sit right in the housing they cause mild overheating and then they lock open fail safe just not right as you can see this is a whaler which is a company that supply, supplies for Volvo it's in the Borg Warner box whalers on the fine print down here so these are the ones that I use they used to have a couple different temperatures now I think they're all 90 degrees 90 degrees Celsius which is fine the fan kicks on at uh, 216 degrees kicks off at 206 degrees Fahrenheit you could do the numbers the most important thing you need to know is that you need to go straight down on top of this bolt if you go at it on an angle you're going to strip the bolt I usually go back in with uh, hex head bolts because these get stripped then you got to get a drill drill the head off pull the bolt out all that stuff anyway you you could put a bit down there a t40 sometime I smack them with a speed handle uh, that gets them loose a lot of times I put this on there and put a cheater uh, tool on there and break them loose let's try that first see how it goes here we are here I could slide a socket over that uh, normally like an 8 or 10 and then use that to try to turn this thing around a lot of times two hands will do it I can also take a box pin wrench like this 12 14 whatever put it on here like this and use that for leverage let me uh, use two hands see if it breaks it loose back here it did come loose with my cheater uh, procedure this one up here is still tight so I'm going to put a ratchet on there this one is easier to get to you rarely strip that one but it is possible to strip that one as well long handle for more leverage I got the tool bit down in there I'm gonna lean on it and twist it should break it loose again it's a t40 wouldn't you know it it's trying to strip on me so I'm going to get my speed handle, try to pop it loose. If my speed handle didn't pop it loose, I'm going to have to drill the head off of it. Really sucks. thought I had my speed handle handy. I do not. So I'm going to take a dab of oil, put a drill bit on it, drill the head off of that. You want to go nice and slow when you do that. Uh, drilling through metal fast is not the best way. Nice and slow, dab of oil on it. Let's get started. I dipped the bit in the cap with some oil in it a couple times, put it on the head. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. Oop, other way. Battery's a little weak, so I don't have much torque. Gotta to take my time. That's probably a good speed. One of the key points in drilling this out is you want to use a drill bit that's the size of the bolt. This is very close. May have to wiggle it a little bit. I may have another drill bit that's a little bigger. Uh, they look about the same size, so I'm going to go with this gold tip one. I'm drilling it in. I'm rocking it just a little bit. There it is. It broke free. That's where you know the head of the bolt is off and use a magnet pick up all that metal as you can and uh, then you'll see what we have in a second as you see the metal got most of the metal up I'm going to use the magnet to get a little bit more of that metal up then I'm going to lift it up and that stud will probably turn right out of there with a needle nose vice grip 
got all of the bolt metals I could with my magnet. Then you lift this up, twist it a little bit, and there you have it. The thermostat. Now this thermostat was not doing well in here. Uh, not sure if it's the right kind. It does have a bleeder pin in there, but it looks a little different. Let's see if it's the right height at least. Nope, that thermostat is higher than the one that I have that's supposed to go in there. Let me set these where you can see it a little better. Uh, that thermostat is probably close enough. I've seen them worse. Uh, that thing on the bottom, definitely smaller. May not plug it good. Top's design a little different. The car was running cold, so I just think the thermostat's worn. I'm going to go ahead in, get that stud out of there. You see if that screws up with my finger. Yep, screws up with my finger. I don't even need the tool. Let me run that magnet over there before I screw that the rest of the way out. This thing is coming out with my finger. I didn't even need a tool to get it the rest of the way out. And I go back in here with water pump bolts. I'll show you one of those. And... That way you don't have this issue with these things. All right. Thermostat housing looks clean. Whatever you do, don't bang on these housing using some kind of tool to try to bang these out of here. If you do that, you're going to crack the thermostat housing. Then you'll have a four-hour job on your hand instead of a 30-minute job. There's a rumor about this pin supposedly being positioned closest to the front of the car that is not true Volvo says you should place it around one o'clock so I placed that pin closest to that bolt hole I'm already ready to put this back down you want to look at the underside of this make sure it's not uh, got any bunch of buildup or something on it if it does wipe that off uh, you can flush the coolant system if you want if you want to replace that coolant sensor Now's the time to do it with this thermostat housing on. And I see that somebody has a rigged up PCV line going over there, which is improper. But that's a story, a tale of another day. Let's get these bolts to put in here. I have a couple of bolts. This looks like the bolt that comes out of the back of the water jacket. I normally get ones a little longer that have a shaft out of, them, out of the water pump area. Because this is so thick, the housing is so thick. So, I'm going to use two of these for now. I'm going to go get two more, a uh, little longer, put them in there. But, uh, this will hold it just fine, 10 millimeter. I usually tighten these down with a quarter inch wrench, with a quarter inch in my hand with an extension, until this wrist tight. You know, it's not, uh, doesn't take a lot of torque on that. So, I got those down. I'm going to put my plug back in my um, radiator in the bottom. Let me go swap out the heater core. I top the coolant up, put as much as I can in it. I drive the car five minutes, bring it back home, let it sit two or three hours, and then top it off again. Uh, if the car is running, you could ease the cap off and top it off unless you have a bad head. If you have a bad head, this will continue to back up and overflow with the car idling. If the car is not idling and you take the cap off, it's just going to keep backing up and overflowing because it's not moving. So just a little tip with topping it off. Next morning, you want to top it off one last time. Make sure you're at the right level before you drive off, and then you should be good to go. A couple of high points with this job. Number one, don't lose that screw or get it mixed up with no other. It's a special screw to go down in between here. Number two... Don't worry about denting up those fins a little bit. That doesn't matter. Number three, if you pull this core out, you can't reuse those seals. It's not going to seal right. And number four, let me show you on the other side. Get the heater core out. Catch the coolant, of course. And if this pops out, it just sticks on there. It may pop out a little harsh because it's been in there for a long time. But really, it just sits in there. No real big deal. You can see it 
the uh, tube coming down fits over this plastic plug that's going through the floor. So just make sure that's in place. Looking at this core, probably original. I don't know why people think that's a good idea. Leaking a little up there. It was leaking by the gaskets. This bottom was about to bust. When it's that brown, it could explode at any time. Since we're three weeks from the new year, I just put 2019 there. I put the mileage and the date there. 2019 there. So let's get this back in so we can get done before it gets dark. I tell people all the time, get this core. This is the core of choice. Close to 50 bucks. I haven't had any problem with any of them failing. Uh, if you got a bad head gasket, you could blow one of these up too, I guess. But if I ever have any issues with them, I'll put it in the comments of the heater core video. People get these heater cores locally off of Amazon, stuff like that. They don't even fit right. These are quick and easy, affordable, and they ship them to you quick. They normally ship same day. So, get it. Man, get it. Try not to jerk these aluminum lines around much getting those seals off of there because that's a plastic junction up there. And if you crack that, you're going to have fun replacing it. Let me slide the new ones on after I wet them with some coolant. Put the cord back in place. Man, I've heard it all. They're so inexpensive. Do the heat adequately. Man, I use them. The heat runs me out of the car. Never had to add extra uh, foam around it or nothing. Put the thing on. Do not over tighten that screw. You'll be good to go. That's it. Screws in there. It's tight. I just tightened it with my hand until it got tight. One time I over tightened it. Thought I was dealing with a lug nut or something. And that dang thing pinched the seal, started leaking. So I had to get a new seal, take it loose, put it back on, haven't had a problem since. But nonetheless, I wipe it down real dry. I drive the car before I put everything back together, make sure it's not leaking, then I put everything back together. Wiped all the coolant from under the floor, under the carpet. I'm probably gonna take this carpet out, pressure wash it see how that goes I put the screw up there the screw in the side on both sides the heater core is fully secure now I'm gonna take this coolant put it in the bottle and take this thing for a test drive again this thing was not uh, heating up properly so I replaced the thermostat I'm gonna put all the coolant in here try not to spill any and uh, we're going to take it out, make sure it warms up, stays warm, don't drop, burp it, bring it back, and uh, top it off in the morning. Whenever the radiator doesn't have the proper Volvo style drain, I use that big pan to catch it. I can never pour that in that bottle, so I transfer it to that. Even spilled some out of there on the ground. So from there, going in there with no funnel. Looks like I got a dead battery. I turned the key and lost my clock. So let me go find my jump box. And we have Red Baron running. Man, those volts are high. Let's see what we got for codes. One code, mass airflow sensor. See if that comes back. I was messing with that mass airflow sensor. Yep, mass airflow sensor. All right, let's go for a spin, people. In the Red Baron, we are almost up to temp already in Red Baron. Ain't hardly off the street. Good high charge on the alternator. We got up to temp real fast in Red Baron. Whoa, that temp dropped. I think that sensor might be bad.
because that thing is going up and down too rapidly. So I'm going to replace that temp sensor. Thermostat might have been good. Note, I could have burped the coolant when that thermostat opened. That could have caused that temperature to drop like that. So let's uh, watch the coolant level and get down here and head back up the hill. I got a little flashing light. My light that controls my transmission. And I got a flash arrow. It's probably a bad PMP switch. Let me turn this light back on. As you can see, the car is in neutral. I'm actually driving uphill like it's in second gear, 25 miles an hour. Let me shift down the drive. And it shifts down the drive. So this thing thinks neutral is drive almost. Temperature is holding steady at 173. So my temp sensor may be bad. Voltage is jumping around a little bit. Got the flash arrow, the low windshield washer fluid, my check engine light. Of course, my steering wheel's torn up. But man, it's running good. As you can see by the clock, she's been running 12 minutes nice and steady. Still at 172. Still don't have a low coolant light. Almost all the lights down here are out, so I need to replace them. Man, she's purring like a kitten. Hose doesn't feel over pressurized. Need to get a new clamp on that. That sucks. So I'm going to. I got a little bit of air burping out of there, so I need to do something about that clamp there. Those clamps are often messed up. See if this will overflow. I'm trying to see if this head is okay. Should be able to ease this cap off without this trying to overflow on it. It's overflowing. This thing may have a bad head. A lot of burping going on there. Yeah, I think this thing has a bad head. So, I'm either going to swap an engine or swap a head in this thing. See if the light is out in this stupid panel here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Play that back, see if that light was on. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.